Hey everybody, coming at you with another video. This is a Warner Archive DVD and Blu-ray update. Um, basically, there's a ton of movies that I referenced in the last video, about 30s films, plus some other ones that I really wanted to get my hands on. I don't think there'll ever be another physical media release of these movies, and I'm all about physical media, as you guys know. So, um, sorry, my hair is wet. I actually just got out of the shower, and I just got done uploading the video that you maybe just have watched. So I'm going to go ahead and start with all of the DVDs first. Um, it'd be nice to get Blu-rays on some of these eventually. Some of them may or may not, um, at least here in North America. So I'm just going to kind of plow through them. I plan on making videos on each of these just little talk discussion videos talking about them. Um, the first one is from 1953, and it's Executive Suite. It's directed by Robert Wise, um, has William Holden, Barbara Stanwyck, tons of people in this movie. Basically, it takes place in a um, executive suite, of course, of a company, and all these famous actors play different vice presidents of this huge company. And basically what happens is the president of the company has a heart attack and dies at the beginning of the movie. And it's all about the, I guess you could say, the backstabbing and the inner politics of who's going to take this company over and, you know, who has the best plan for the company. And it's basically a political drama, except you take the political stuff out and you put in business. Um, this film is incredibly underrated. Love it. I had never heard of it until I saw it on TCM. And uh, I was going through a William Holden, Barbara Stanwyck phase, and I was like, oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna check that movie out. And I loved it. So, Executive Suite. Next up, actually the next... Um, I'll do this one first. The next one is another Barbara Stanwyck film that I really wanted to own that I saw on TCM, and it has no physical media release other than this, and um, has Henry Fonda as well. It's from 1938, and it's called The Mad Miss Manton. That's, that's yeah, that's her name. Um, Henry Fonda plays a reporter. Barbara Stanwyck plays a... I guess you could say a socialite who's obsessed with murder mystery and kind of causing trouble in a way, just with her demeanor and and her, like, just ways of going about finding out drama and all this kind of stuff. And she is phenomenal in this movie. And um, obviously sparks fly between Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck. And uh, it's just a phenomenal little fun yarn. So I really wanted to own it. These are movies I really want to have in my collection. This is what physical media is all about. And I want to support the Warner Archive. And um, yes, it's DVD, but I don't care. I want to support them. And I want um, this movie on physical media. So The Mad Miss Manton. Next up is a musical that me and my wife both really like. And I wanted to get it I don't know if it has a Blu-ray release or not, but I wanted to get it on um, Warner Archive DVD just to have it in my collection. And it is Judy Garland, Van Johnson, in, in the good old summertime. Now, this is based on a play by Miklos Lazlo. Um, and it's based on a screenplay by Samson Raffleson. I don't know, but... It is based on the play, and it's based on a screenplay that was Shop Around the Corner. So basically, this is Shop Around the Corner with a musical with two different leads. And for those of you who obviously probably already know this, but You've Got Mail is also based on the original screenplay for In Good Old Summertime. And each version has its own uniqueness. Um, this one's Technicolor and Grand. It has Buster Keaton in a supporting role, which I really love. He does some fun stuff in here. 
and uh, it's just a great movie. Really fun. Glad to have it. Next up is a movie I fell in love with this year uh, with a new actor that I fell in love with. And not, not a new actor, but a new actor that I've um, finally went down the rabbit hole and watched most of his movies, Paul Muni in I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang. And he plays a guy who comes back from World War II. Um, no, World War II hasn't even happened yet. This movie came out in 1932. World War One, and he has dreams of big, being an engineer or an architect or an engineer. It's one of those two. Um, and he leaves town, and he's not looking back. Meanwhile, he ends up realizing that life is harder for veterans at the time than he thought, and he ends up hanging out on the wrong, wrong people. He ends up in jail, and it is about his time with the chain gang, and what he does to survive. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. And um, really controversial at the time. It really changed the way that people thought about the prison systems. And it got a lot of, you know, good progressive policies, like, starting to come about. And this movie caused a lot of discussion. So if you guys have not seen this movie, I highly recommend it. The next three movies are movies by an actor that... I've talked about on here a lot, and I really wanted to own these because I can't get them any other way, and can't keep them on DVR forever. Um, first one is from 1940, and it's Brother Orchid with Edward G. Robinson. Edward G. Robinson plays a oh, and Humphrey Bogart. He plays a a mob boss who decide he just gets sick of the racket and he leaves to and uh, he travels around Europe and stuff and. He has dreams of, you know, spending the big bucks and just living a legitimate life. Well, turns out he doesn't really feel like, um, you know, he starts going broke. And so he goes back to try to take over his old, his old gang, who is now in, led by Humphrey Bogart. And basically they have a, a little brawl and Edward J. Robinson, so he doesn't get killed, escapes into a monastery and he basically impersonates and tries to become a monk um and yeah that's pretty much all I want to get into with that because I don't want to spoil it and it's actually a really funny um it's kind of like a spoof of Edward G. Robinson's earlier gangster films uh great movie next up is another movie I love with Edward G. Robinson Blackmail this came out in 1939 and he plays an ex con or a fugitive who is now married and he's put all those bad things behind him. You don't really find out what he did. Um, well, you kind of do. He was set up and he's just been a fugitive. And basically, he has a company that goes and takes the fires out of oil wells when they blow up. And he just goes ahead and just demolishes the fires. And he ends up getting blackmailed, obviously, by the title. And he gets sent to a chain gang. So this is another chain gang film. And um, yeah, it's another fun, kind of makes you think movie. And I love Edward G. Robinson, so I definitely wanted to get it. So, blackmail. Next up is another Edward G. Robinson movie. This one's from 1942. And um, basically, I haven't seen this one in a while. But it's called Larceny, Inc., and it is another gangster style movie. It has a bunch of different people um, from the 30s, you know, Warner Brothers uh, contract actors in this. And I'll be honest with you, I have not seen this in so long. I completely forgot the plot. Um, I do know that the part of this takes place on Christmas and it involves them robbing a place. So I think it's slightly a heist movie. I watched like 15 Edward G. Robinson movies at one time, and this is the one that I only watched once, and it was months ago, so I kind of forgot. They all kind of blend together a little bit, so I will come back to you and talk about this one. Next up is a movie that I, I watched for the first time this year when I was going through my William Powell, Myrna Loy phase, and um, this one has Clark Gable in it as well. It's Manhattan Melodrama. 
It is from 1934, and it was the first movie that William Powell and Myrna Loy, known to many as um, Nick and Nora from the Thin Man movies, and basically this movie is about a criminal and a prosecutor who, or a district, an attorney who grow up together through different sides of the law and how it affects their friendship over the years. Um, this movie is surprisingly dark and it, it, it ended very, in a very dark way. It's definitely melodramatic, so I could give it, give it that, but I definitely really wanted to own it for the historical value of it being a, um, Myrna Loy and Clark Gable and William Powell movie. It was also the movie that, um, pretty sure this is the movie, yeah, that John Dillinger went and saw before he got shot, so... Those are all the DVDs. Next up, I actually got this one for my wife. It's a movie that I watched for the first time this year as well. It's from 1957 with Gregory Peck and Lauren Bacall, Designing Women. I remember it being like a comedy, and it was really funny seeing uh, Gregory Peck in a comedy like this, like slapstick. So yeah, I look forward to seeing this again and talking more about it. Next up is one of my all-time favorite movies with the man himself, James Cagney. Um, Yankee Doodle Dandy, 1942, biopic about um, George M. Cohan. Great film. Love it. When is it? It was 1942. Yep, 1942. And next up, this is a, a film that I absolutely loved and it destroyed me and lifted me up and destroyed me at the same time. I'm going to be talking about it in a video shortly. It is 1973's Scarecrow, starring Gene Hackman and Al Pacino. That is just an epic team-up. They play two homeless guys that are trying to get to Pittsburgh to start a business. Um, I really don't want to give more away. I'm going to make a video on this in the next couple days because it just really impacted me. Anyways, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you've seen any of these movies down here, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.